Welcome back, everybody, for Hope Part 2. Uh, this week will be better. There will actually be some hope. Um, but this week we're going to flip it. We're going to start with my story and then end with the disciples. So, when last we left off, I was in the doctor's office. And the doctor just told me, Kyle, you have a genetic condition and... I'm holding a microphone, it's not clear. And it is uh, likely that at a certain point in the near future, you will be unable to walk without assistance and there is nothing we can do for you. <laughs> and I was like, cool. And then my whole world went whoosh, and I felt hopeless, right? Uh, it felt like life was over um, and it was depressing, it was sad, it felt hopeless. Um, and it, <laughs> like, it's better to be honest about this stuff, right? Because if you're in a hard place, you want to know the truth. And so the truth is, um, it didn't get better for a long time. And there were nights and there were days when I was praying to God and I would say, you know, I'm sorry for any bad stuff I've done like, please take this away from me, or I promise to be as good as it can be, please take this away from me, um, you know, I'll do whatever you want, just please take this away from me, and um, it, it didn't get taken away, so I didn't know what to make of that, um, and I was frustrated, and I was angry, and I was sad, and I was lost. And I still felt like I was in this tight, constricted world where I, you know, uh, and, and like even literally my world felt constricted where as it got harder and harder to walk, um, you know, I didn't want to walk long distances even across parking lots to go into a store or a restaurant because um, I was scared of falling. And um, so it was like, I, I feel comfortable going here, but I never want to go to this place. And then my friends, you know, would be like, hey, you should come out with us to here. And if I've never been there before, I would do my best to research what it was like online. But if I couldn't feel comfortable, then I would just say, yeah, I'm busy, right? And so literally, in my, all, my world also just shrunk down. Um, and I was stubborn, and I didn't want help, so... I waited until past when I should have to like get a little arm crutch to help me walk and I waited until past when I should have to start using a wheelchair because I didn't want that and I'm stubborn and that would acknowledge the truth of my situation and I wanted to live in the delusion that I would get better, right? Um, Acknowledging truth is hard. Acknowledging truth is hard. So whether it's the fact that you're sick or someone you love is sick or someone you thought you could trust, you can no longer trust or someone you thought was close to you is no longer close to you. Those truths are hard to accept. And what are ways that we avoid truths? Well, maybe we avoid getting the help that we need. That was me, right? I, literally, I could have used things that would have made it easier for me to walk. It literally would have opened my world back up, but um, I didn't want it. Uh, so there's uh, ignoring potential help. There's self-isolating. There's refusing to talk to other people about it because that means you have to acknowledge it's real first, right? So we, we keep everything to ourselves, we shut down. Um, maybe we numb out with alcohol or drugs because when we're in those states, then you know we're not living in the real world and we don't have to acknowledge the truth, right? The truth is hard and we can avoid it for as long as possible. But eventually we hit this wonderful place called rock bottom, right? That's where you're at the worst. And 
That is not a fun place to be. But do you know what's cool? <laughs> is when you're at the rock bottom, you cannot go lower. So while that place is awful and getting to that place is awful, people who are in that place have the most opportunity to become someone new, to grow, to change, to develop, um, to enlarge their lives, to become different people. All those things are possible because there's no other direction to go but up. So eventually, through uh, the prodding uh, and suggestions and even requirements from friends, I started using a wheelchair and I hated the initial feeling of it. And then after about like a month, I was like, holy smokes, I can do so much more, right? And so um, when your world starts to open up again, like if you were to chart it on a graph, it definitely is not just a continuous upward trajectory, right? Uh, just because I started using a wheelchair and was able to get back to some semblance of life, that doesn't mean there weren't days and weeks where I was still frustrated and where I was still pissed about my situation and mad at God for handing me this lot in life. This is unfair, right? Those things still happen. There are still like dips and even deep, right, dips back down again. But overall, the trajectory is up. And it was amazing, right? And for some of you, it, what's crazy is you've never known me but in a wheelchair. You've never known me but in a wheelchair. And we've shared laughs and we've shared tears and we've had and crazy, like crazy uh, memories together. Things I would never trade in for anything. But in that moment when I was in the doctor's office, I thought my life was over, right? That there was no hope. And yet there are the, like there was this entire wealth of memories and people that have impacted me that on the other side of that hopelessness that I could have never imagined. I could have never imagined. And that's the whole thing is that when we are in those tight spaces of hopelessness, we can't imagine something being on the other side of that. It feels like this is forever. And I cannot say how and I cannot say when, but all I can promise you is, is that there is life on the other side of those constrictions, of that hopelessness, of when your world shrinks down to nothing. There is life on the other side of that, right? And the only reason I can say that to you now is because I've experienced it, right? So that's why I can't tell you when it will happen or what it will look like. Because our brains, we kind of suck at imagining things, especially when we're in that hopeless cavern, right? In that pit. Of despair it is hard to imagine life getting better and the only thing I can tell you is it does in like unexpected ways in ways that you couldn't imagine but what's cool is it's not your job to have to figure out how it's going to get better or how to imagine it right God is taking care of that part your job is to keep going right your job is to keep going and that if you hit that rock bottom place, that you're like, okay, I'm at the bottom. Now it's time to get up. Now it's time to get up, right? And God is like, has this whole world ready for you to enter in, right? And to be a new person, to grow, to change, um, and to experience hope. And so that's what I'm giving you now, <laughs> is something to believe in that my story should could hopefully tell you 
that it gets better on the other side, right? Obviously, there are still things in my life that I wish I could change, but I wouldn't trade my life. Most, I would say 90% of my days and my time, I enjoy. I enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy what my hobbies are. Um, I enjoy my friends. I enjoy the students. You guys make me laugh like crazy, right? Um, and if you would have told me that like eight or nine years ago when I was in that doctor's office, I probably wouldn't have believed you. And so I just want you to know there is something that you can hold on to, right? And we're gonna talk about the last, you're like, what could the last week be? The last week is the importance of hope and what it means to hold on to something, right? But going back to those disciples, right? Last week, the disciples, their leader, this guy who had pulled them out of their normal lives, died and they were hopeless. How, what am I supposed to do now? I can't go back to my old life. Everyone knows I was following around this guy who turned out to be a criminal and was executed, right? And I have no one to follow. I'm lost. I have nothing, right? And three days later, just three days, right? It all flips around again. He comes back from the dead. He comes back from the dead. And it wasn't anything they had to do, right? They weren't even anticipating it or waiting for him at the tomb. Nope. Even though they had completely given up hope, he comes back for them. He comes back for them and their world opens up again. And he gives them new purpose, right? He renews their life and he gives them hope again, right? They could probably have never imagined that would have happened, but it did, but it did, right? So for the disciples in my story, there is hope, right? Your world can open up again. You can crawl out of that pit. So I would just hope that you would believe that and that you would hold on to that. If you are in one of those times where you're like, I don't know how I'm doing tomorrow. I don't know how I'm doing next week. Know that there is the other side of it and it gets better. So next week, we're talking about what it means to have hope and to hold on to it. So stay tuned for that. Um, I hope that you know that even though we're far apart, um, we are with you. You can always reach out to me if you need someone to talk to. I got your back, homie. So um, it sucks that we can't be together, but that doesn't mean we're alone. Uh, I will talk to you soon. Be well and eat your cornflakes. Bye.